I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. Consult a professional investment advisor before making any investment decisions. This show is for entertainment only. Faites vos propres recherches. Here we are. In another episode. And the Simple Success Podcast. And this is Financial Life Coaching from a Happiness Perspective. The title of today's topic is so open that I don't know what to think about it. Can you please start us off by telling us where you're going with this? Most certainly. The topic and title build off a quote, Courage is being afraid but going on anyway. That's an interesting quote. It's sort of related to the Coco Chanel quote, isn't it? I always thought if I had courage, fear would be the last thing on my mind. It is similar, and you're not alone. In investments and generally in life, plenty of people have this erroneous belief that folks who are doing great things have conquered all the fears in the world. Basically, what you're saying is that it is not enough to have personal courage, but instead to be super active. You've said it better than I would have. What's the use of being super courageous if you're more docile than a sloth? Goodness, John, you had to throw poor sloths into the mix, and you know sloths are my favorite pets. Ever seen Zootopia? I have. And our work here is not down to the level of the DMV. So enough of the sloth jokes. Right. That was just an example. I am sure it takes courage and a generous amount of doing for your sloths to live that seemingly docile existence. Speaking of courage and doing, to me, it seems like the most courageous act is doing, regardless of what I'm feeling. I concur. Besides, how will people know you're courageous if there's no fruit to show for it? For instance, a mango tree is known and loved because of its fruit, not because of its firewood. You have raised points I never thought about. It's about productivity. It's about being fruitful. It's not about feeling courageous. I'm glad you caught that. It's only the right and consistent actions that will make you productive. Feelings are just that. Feelings. That's a big one. I couldn't miss it. I had to catch it. You, meaning the listener, may be the most courageous and normal person in the world, but if you're only talking the talk and not walking the walk, less courageous folks who are putting in the work will put you to shame. This ties up with the something that we are covering today, right? That's right. We are continuing the theme of doing rather than just saying. The adage of action speaking louder than words will apply to what we'll talk about today. Wait a minute. I've got another adage for you. The more the merrier. What is that adage. Talk is cheap. Dirt cheap. What's strange is that we use these adages loosely in everyday lingo, but we hardly put them to use. They have virtually lost all meaning and have been turned into placeholders in conversations. Henceforth, I swear that I'm going to speak less and work like my life depends on it. So help me, infinite intelligence. Who? Infinite intelligence. You know, that generic label we use that can't offend anyone or offend them all equally. Yeah, or that, of course, you were saying. I was saying that that is an oath that anyone who wants to excel in investing should take. Putting in the work is the way to go. Unfortunately, putting in the work is something many folks don't like doing nowadays. Yeah, like we said several podcasts ago, the word work is made up of four letters, but it's not a four-letter word. If you don't embrace work, sooner or later, poverty will have you in a chokehold. Like the young folks say, word. Now, for those who are clueless, what does that term mean? It means giggle. English, please. It's slang for same, or that I agree with what you're saying. You have talked about embracing work to avoid the pitfalls of poverty. And this means there are dangers or disadvantages of courage, right? You must think about these things in totality. Look, if you're not careful, courage can morph into a close-minded attitude. I want to guard against that happening to me. How does it happen? This often happens when courage gets into someone's head. In the investing game, and even in my favorite sport, being overconfident can make you lose big time. I can already think of investing lessons, but I'll leave that bit for the last section today. Your enthusiasm is highly contagious, TT. Investment lessons work best if one is enthusiastic. If you take the lessons in perpetual pain, like your teeth are being pulled out, sans anesthesia, you'll look at an investment like it's a pain in the neck. And of course, that's why Daniel tells us in our podcast that we're doing financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. 
Yes, and I just love mindful moments like that. Like the power of belief, attitude is a pivot. It's the central point on which one's investment goals turn or oscillate. If you have the right attitude toward work, you'll have better outcomes. After this podcast, I will look differently at being afraid. I once heard one of the most feared boxers say he was nervous before every fight. Yet, to us, he is courage personified. The same applies to some top entrepreneurs I know. They make what seem to be bold moves devoid of any fear. But real people have confessed that they had trepidations, yet they made the moves. If I knew then what I know now about such issues, I would be further ahead in life. Don't worry. It's never too late to adjust your attitude and thereby readjust the trajectory of your life. You have such a way with words, John. No wonder you're a Toastmaster. That's very kind of you. Don't get me started on that, though, unless you'd never want to go for a break. You mean the first one, right? This is now, right? Yes? Break number one. Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast, financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us, please subscribe to us in your favorite podcast player. You can find us on both the App Store and the Play Store because our message is for everyone. Leave a rating for us, or even better, tell a friend. Whichever you choose, thank you so much for helping us do this for you. To leave us a written message, which just might lead to more in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes to find our subreddits. There is also our Facebook group page, Twitter, and other ways which we'll tell you about from time to time. You can also find an Easter egg every so often, so listen closely. Thank you again, and keep those constructive ideas coming. Today, you've redefined courage. Is there another way you can further redefine it to drive the point home? U.S. Senator and one-time prisoner of war John McCain defined courage as a brief, singular occurrence, quote, that rare moment of unity between conscience, fear, and action when something deep within us strikes the flint of love, of honor, of duty to make the spark that fires our resolve. That definition can only come from a man who's been to hell and back. That's right. The same principle applies to those in pursuit of happiness. Wherever I turn, I see that courageous action is of the essence. In business, courageous action is a special kind of calculated risk-taking. Would you kindly explain? Sure. People who become good leaders have a greater than average willingness to make bold moves, but they strengthen their chances of success and avoid career suicide through careful deliberation and preparation. The operative words are careful, deliberation, and preparation. Yes. Business courage is not so much a visionary leader's inborn characteristic as a skill acquired through decision-making processes that improve with practice. What is it then? In other words, most great business leaders teach themselves to make high-risk decisions. They learn to do this well after a while, often decades. There's nothing like an overnight success. Right, there's nothing like it, because they don't usually happen. Learning to take an intelligent gamble requires an understanding of courage calculation a method of making success more likely while avoiding rash, unproductive, or irrational behavior. Six discrete processes make up the courage calculation. What are these six processes? They are setting primary and secondary goals, determining the importance of achieving them, tipping the power balance in your favor, weighing risks against benefits, selecting the proper time for action, and Developing Contingency Plans. Do you have a guest today? I know, you always have someone up your sleeve to give us practical advice. I do have a guest, Richard Friesen, the author of A Private Conversation with Money. Ooh, I like the book title. That means I'm going to like what Richard has to say to us. Hello, Richard. Glad to have you here with us today. Hello, I'm Richard Friesen. I'm the author of A Private Conversation with Money. And my mission in life is to invite people into rapport with money, meaning, and wealth. Interesting. Tell me more about that. 
I started my career or my one of my major careers as a trader on the floors of the exchanges. And I left a major arbitrage firm and started building my own firm. And I hired traders, but what I noticed was some of them did well, some of them did okay, but about a third of them just didn't make it. Same training, same information. So I started to ask what was the issue and what was different. And it turns out under hypnosis, we discovered some subconscious mm. anchors they had, their yeah. be a belief system, worthiness, all the way down to the core identity that prevented them from the goals that they wanted. So I started to think, how can we make change intentional? And as I did this, I bumped into a whole bunch of issues. And one of them is our comfort and relationship with money. And this is very insightful because sometimes I've found, maybe you found this too, that the answer to a given question seems on the surface to be pretty obvious and straightforward. Mm -hmm. And yet it doesn't always work for people because we're not taking into account what's floating their boat, for example. I think what you're pointing to is dealing things on a symptomatic level. In other words, people have millions of self-help books on their shelves. But unless they can get down to what is the driver of the behaviors that don't serve them, they just keep bumping up against this. You know, well, tomorrow I'm going to go exercise or I'm going to quit drinking or I'm going to uh, spend more time with my family or I'm going to give my boss more value or whatever it is. And then they repeat the same behavior over and over again. So when that happens, we can make an assumption that there's something deeper driving it. And that's where the book, A Private Conversation with Money, goes. It's not just about you know how to invest. It's about what are the deeper drivers that prevent us from a positive relationship with money. And isn't that important? Because when I did financial advising one-on-one -on -one with people, mm -hmm. if I got, for example, a question about should I pay off my mortgage, I would be careful to let people know that there's two answers to that question. There's the math answer, but beyond that, there's the comfort level. If the math says, don't pay off your house, invest it instead, but you personally feel like, <laughs> I would sleep a whole lot better if I paid off my house, then that's the right answer. Well, what you're pointing out is something that a lot of people miss, and that is the psychological value, the comfort value that we have in our yep. decisions. Now, the challenge there is that sometimes we confuse or it's hard to distinguish between that comfort value, I'm paying it off just because I feel better about it, it's my house, I don't have to worry about it, to ones that are survival-based, that we, when we were younger, we created a lot of survival mechanisms, and these are generally out of fear. So distinguishing between those two create, uh, demands some self-awareness. And that's where I spend a lot of my time with my clients and in the book, and I have what's called the golden keys. And they are first, awareness, and we divide that into our physical sensations, our emotions, and our thoughts. The second after awareness is acceptance of what we discover. And then we develop agency, the ability to notice, be aware of all these things going on inside of us and not just be reactive to them, be aware of them, accept them, and then make decisions from our higher self. And that's not always an easy thing to do. I've personally, I, I've found that <laughs> so many times I have to, just consciously remind myself, yeah, this is what you need to do. Don't forget, almost like having a, um, what do they call that? Was a pilot called a knee board, you know, where you've got that mm -hmm. checklist of things that you, 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 you have to remember to do because even though they seem obvious sometimes, if you don't take them step by step, your results will be different. Well, I think that's a good point. And sometimes those lists and taking them step by step is really helpful to create new habits and new behaviors. If we find ourselves repeating behaviors that don't serve us, then we can start to say, ask, okay, what's driving those? Yes. So tell me, Richard, when people want to know more and get involved in applying some of this, What's the best way to, for them to get in touch with you? Well, uh, they can go to our website, conversations.money. They can find our book on Amazon and other fine retailers, A Private Conversation with Money. Okay, or we'll put all that going, in the show notes, of course. Yeah, okay. And they can go to a site we've just set up for your listeners, A Private Conversation with Money okay. slash Simple Success. 
thank you very much. Right. I've really, really enjoyed having you on. Yeah, there's just a lot of things we can drill down on in terms of, you know, money is a symptom and our behavior with money is a symptom. And let's find out what is driving us so that we can invite people to rapport with money, meaning and success. Well, thank you very much for your time, Richard. My appreciations to you for the right hard questions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard, for giving us those insights. Hey, DT, what do you think about his perspective? Wow, quite eye-opening. I need to absorb those insights over a cup of coffee. You mean, just think about it? I think he means that you should try it. Okay, okay, I'll try it. Alex meant you should do it. And I will, right now, in just a second, after I stole some more. And But first, break number two. We know a lot about you already, because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to our podcast. And we also know that you probably know how to subscribe. So as soon as you're done with that, tell us your story. We have ways you can contact us. It involves a special link where you can leave us a message. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. The reason for subscribing I thought you'd never ask. When you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. It just happens in your player without you having to go search again. How cool is that? This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe today, whatever app and from whatever place you like. And don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things. And remember, that's good. As always, bueno, civil. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. Find it and you win too. I enjoy every bit of this podcast, but this is the part I enjoy the most. Why, if I may ask? It's the part where I gather actionable tips, which I can use in my investment journey. I know I don't need to ask because, from the look of things, you're bursting at the seams with tips. You got that right. And the first tip comes from the quote I used as the gist of today's topic. In investing, what separates pretenders from the real McCoys isn't just courage, but action. You've got to take action, but you've also got to have the courage first. Absolutely. And today, I have learned that action is the magic word for success in any venture. After you have the right attitude, right. And if you read stories of successful investors and entrepreneurs, you will find that their success is defined by a series of actions. Many times, they step out into alien territory in fear and without all the answers. Hold it right there. Do you mean to say I should not cross all my T's and dot every single I before I set the investing sales? If we would have waited to know all the answers, we'd have never landed on the moon. We were afraid of millions of things that could go catastrophically wrong, but we went into space nonetheless. Courage is being afraid, but going on anyway. Without action, I'm a lag behind. Imagine how far we would have been behind in the space race if we hadn't acted. Imagine where mobile telephony would have been if those courageous inventors hadn't acted. That's enough to make me drop the lame excuses ASAP and act yesterday. And as you'll find, or may have already found, when you act, you will learn lessons which will help you make better decisions in your investing journey. Life lessons don't have it in a vacuum. They are Thomas Edison-esque in nature. I will make thousands of unsuccessful attempts. But as you keep trying, you'll realize that they're not unsuccessful attempts. You're just finding one more way not to do things. You're getting smarter. You're narrowing your odds. Why haven't I ever seen it that way? I guess I was looking at the glass half empty. It's all about perspective, DT. What else can I do? Courage in and of itself is not enough. It doesn't bear fruits. The fruits come out of the actions that an investor takes. I hear you. Courage is measured in quantifiable results. 
When we look at the total of the lives of people we deem to be courageous, we always point to the things they did. I see it now. Courage is not some abstract notion. No, it's not. Courage is a definite construct, and its definiteness is defined by results or outcomes. Results and outcomes don't just happen, they are caused. The law of causation states that every change in nature is produced by some cause. It's not produced by courage, but by some cause. That is so deep, especially in investing circles. And here is another way to look at it. Courage is an invisible currency. The only way to turn it into legal tender is through actions. I cannot trade with an invisible currency. It's virtually worthless. Once again, you took the words right out of my mouth. The worth or value of courage can only be found in actions. What's the other lesson? It is that you should not wait for courage to strike you before you decide to make an investment move. You make the moves and let courage find you in the thick and thin of things. That's kind of like, that's good, right? It is. I am guilty of waiting for a good dose of courage to hit me before I make a move, though. And let me guess, the courage rarely hits you. When that happens, you make excuses for not making investing moves. And meanwhile, other people, some who I think are less courageous, are making powerful moves. Thank you for making that confession. It's easy to make better decisions if one recognizes and rectifies their faux pas. No bearing. My head in the sand. In investing, that's one of the most catastrophic blunders you can make. The biggest lesson I take away is that in investing, it's deadly to mistake a close-minded attitude for courage. That's true. You need to have a level head because you're making decisions that concern your life, your life savings, and sometimes the livelihoods of other people. No acting rashly or throwing all caution to the wind, huh? No, not this time. We've talked about how actions are key in investing, but these are not just any actions. They are actions that are considered. These are actions that are well thought out. But not overthought, right? That's right. No overthinking whatsoever. In an older episode, we said that overthinking can lead to analysis paralysis. You can't get anything done if you're overthinking your actions. There are so many things I never knew. This podcast is blowing my ignorance to smithereens. And you're practicing? Yes, I'm practicing. And repeating? And repeating. Which is how you've all gotten good. Gracias por escuchar. Salut. A la prochaine. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King, John C. Brandy, Alter Ego, Doubting Thomas, Fact Checker, A Small Brown Beef Animal, Seriously, Tiny. Facts are important but are also easy. Social Manager, Abraham Lincoln, Media Expert, Augustus Caesar, Psychologist, William James, Sound Designer, Adobe's Creative Suite, Spanish Consultant, Cameron J.K. Brandy, French Consultant, Leah, The Do Your Own Research Lady, Videographer, Eto Moon Koshki, Audio Prop, Les Paul. Inspiration, many podcasts and other sources and of course Napoleon Hill. We also have websites and you can subscribe to both podcasts. You can even send us a video, audio or text message. But of course, you'll have to head to the show notes either on your phone or on the web to get the links and stuff. All the clickable links are in the show notes. And before we forget, the artificial intelligence or AI voices you hear in our work come from Google, Amazon Polly, and open AI like we say in the show notes. We just love what AI can do when lovingly crafted. Finally, you can find us on ProtMatch.com, Matchmaker.fm, PodBooker and Podcast Guests where we consider guests and consider guesting on other people's shows. And really finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams, as well as from AI MuseNet. The sound effect credits go to Jackson Academy Ashmore, Kanusi G. Dr. Jekyll, Joe Payne, Everything Sounds, MK Play More Stories, ERH, Sand Emotions, Big Pickle 51, and Just Kidding, yes that's his or her name, all on freesound.org, also, languages are the bomb. Paul.